Well, if you have your Bibles with you this morning or this evening, I'd like to go over to the book of Genesis and also to the book of Galatians. <clears throat> sure do they enjoy that song, amen. amen. Thank the Lord for it. God sure has been good. Amen. amen. And I like that song, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Amen. amen. Brother Phil, you go ahead, brother. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Well, you pray for him, brother. Amen. I might not be going to the Super Bowl, but I'm going to heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Much more important. But if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like to go to Genesis 24 and also uh, Galatians and uh, chapter number 2. Genesis 24 and Galatians and chapter number 2. If you like to stand whenever you get there. <clears throat> the Bible says in Genesis 24 and verse number 49. Genesis 24 and verse number 49. <clears throat> it says, now and, and now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said this. Now listen. The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee, take her and go, and let her thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. Now, I like to preach on this evening what the Lord's help is. If it's from the Lord, you can't say nothing. Amen? Amen. If it's from the Lord, you can't say nothing about it this evening. So I'd like to, uh, we'll, we'll go to Genesis or uh, uh, Galatians in just a second, but you all pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you to help us this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that were shared with us tonight on your goodness. Father, always does my heart good and encouragement to see other believers talk about your goodness. A testimony goes the long way, and sometimes people don't realize their uh, testimony affects many people that's around them in a positive way. Lord, I ask you to bind back anything that may hinder this service tonight. I'm leaning upon you, trusting in your, trusting in your word tonight. <clears throat> and you said that your word will go out and accomplish what it will and it won't return void. And Father, I realize that my preaching don't make your word powerful. Your word makes the preaching powerful. So many people got this backwards today and got it twisted. And I ask the Lord to just help us to stand on the Bible no matter what it takes. And when we fail, when we stumble, I pray, Lord, we don't throw somebody under the bus. But, Lord, that we help them. That we lift them up to Jesus. That we take it to them. And I ask you, Lord, to help us to be better about that tonight. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to preach on tonight with the Lord's help. Uh, Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, sometimes it's more of a preaching. But I also like to do a little bit of teaching also. But I like to say this evening, if it's from the Lord, you can't say anything about it. Amen. There's too many people in today's time that has something to say about what's in God's book. And I tell you, it don't add up to two cents tonight, amen. Whenever me and you try to add our opinion into this book, take away from this book, we're on troublesome ground. It's the best thing that we could do as a church, as a whole, as a Christian, as a man, as a woman, as a child, or anything else, is realize what God says God means. Realize what God says, we can't overthrow it, we can't overturn it, we can't twist it. Whether people don't like it or not, we say it, amen. But now I'm going to tell you something today, you can do something the right way, you can be standing for the right thing and do it in the wrong way. 
You can be doing the right thing and do it in the wrong way. You say, what do you mean by that? i tell you one thing is I don't agree with necessarily wearing hats in the church, Brother Charles, but I could do that in the wrong way. We've seen things in life be handled in the wrong way, amen. I've seen people jump to a conclusion and then start talking about somebody or something and they don't realize what's going on. Now they're taking a stand on what's right, but they're doing it in the wrong way. There's a way to tell somebody what's in the Bible, where we believe and where we stand, and to do it in the correct way, in a biblical fashion, in a way that pleases the Father tonight. I believe a lot of people stand up for what's right, but they stand up for what's right in the wrong way. I've seen many street preachers today that goes out and they preach the book and they preach on hell, but it's not good to tell somebody they're going to roast like a hot dog in hell. Amen? I don't believe in going out and telling somebody you're going to roast like a hot dog and your family's going to roast and burn up like a bunch of maggots and so on and so forth and, and just completely obliterate somebody and make them feel so bad and so degraded with no love, no sympathy pointing them to Christ. They're just preaching on hell. There's some preacher that, people that only preach on heaven. Do I preach on heaven? Yes. Do I preach on hell? Yes. I'm getting to a point this evening. I'm telling you, though, that we can do things, stand for the right thing in the wrong way. Some people will abuse the word of God. Hey, Amen. There's a testimony I'm going to tell you this evening. There's a lady that got saved not too long ago that I know. You know what she told me? Her mom would stand her in front of the Ten Commandments and beat her. In front of, obey thy father and thy mother. Is the Ten Commandments, is it good to try to go by the Ten Commandments and for, uh, for a child to obey their parents? Yes, but I'll tell you what you don't do. You take, don't take them in front of the uh, Ten Commandments and try to put the fear of God in them by beating them and telling them to follow the Ten Commandments. You can stand for what's right, but do it in the right, wrong way today. We can stand for what's right, but run people off. We can stand for what's right, but not do it in a meek, in a lowly way. What are you saying this, what, this evening? When you do things right, and you do things to the Bible, not everybody's going to like it. Not everybody's going to agree with what you say, even if you do do it in the right way. Not everybody's going to agree with what you say, even though you say, God said it, I believe it, that's what I'm standing on, and I love you today. I care about you, I care about what's going on and so on and so forth, but people today in today's time don't like truth and when you tell people the truth they don't like, you become their enemy. I'm not nobody's enemy today. I don't want to be an enemy, Brother, Tra Brother Josh of the church. Christ died for the church and he loves the church and the church is bought with the price and he's coming back to get the church. Who am I to get up and to degrade, to ridicule, or to put anybody down using the word of God in an abusive way tonight? You can't abuse the word of God, amen? We just preach it and we preach it and tell it in the way God wants us to tell it. But I like to say tonight, if it's from the Lord, you can't overthrow it. Now they re realize in Genesis 24, they said this, now, we don't see whether they liked the saying. We don't see whether they didn't like the saying because their opinion didn't matter because it came from the Lord. Whether I like it, whether I don't like it, if the Bible says it today, that's what I'm called to preach. That's what I'm called to tell others whether I like it or I don't today. Amen. But the Bible said in Genesis chapter 24 and verse number 50, Then Laban and Bethlehem answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah's before thee, take her and go, and let her, thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. Amen. This evening as a church and as a whole, we got to stand for what's right. Amen. It's troublesome times. It's rough times. There's people today that don't care about your best interest today, but I'm going to tell you, if somebody gives me the word of God, that's what I want this evening. I want it whether I like it, whether I don't like it, because my opinion don't matter. If God says it in the book, I'm to believe it. 
God didn't ask for my opinion. He didn't ask for my two cents, what I think about His Word. God said this. God said in His Word, He said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. Amen. Hey, it don't matter what I think about it, Brother Josh. It's the Word of God before I got here. It's the Word of God now. And it'll be the Word of God when I'm gone. It don't change. It's steadfast. It's firm. Before the foundations of the world, God had it wrote down. God had it wrote down before Adam and Eve stepped foot on the earth. He knew what was going to be happening. He knew every word that would be inside of this book before the first human walked on the face of the earth. He knew Adam and Eve was going to fail, but he knew that Christ was also going to come. He knew there would be a great remedy to save old sinners today. And at the end of the day, the most important decision that me and you can make is to be saved and born again. Amen. We like that type of preaching, but we don't like when the preacher comes along and says this. Hey, we're supposed to believe the book cover to cover. We want to believe on heaven, believe on the blood, believe on eternal salvation, but we are called to believe the book from cover to cover. Now, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was Romans 10, 9, and that was it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This whole book is the Word of God. The things we like, the things we don't like, the blood that was shed, the depression, the anxiety, the worry, it's all in the Word of God. This book is a life book. Amen, it ain't only a book that when you're on the mountaintops, it's also in the valleys. It's life, Brother Charles. There's parts in this book, i tell you this evening, that's boring to me. If you start reading through them names, don't tell me it ain't boring. Amen, it's life inside of this book. You know what happens in life? Sometimes you get bored. Sometimes you get worried. These people got worried. They went through some things today, things they didn't want to go through. And sometimes inside of this book, there's some things me and you may not agree with. In the flesh. But the thing is, tonight it don't matter what me and you agree with inside of the flesh. It's if it's in the book, that's what we believe. Amen. Now if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like to go over to Galatians in chapter number 2. Galatians in chapter number 2. I believe a lot of the reason today that the truth ain't being preached no more. It's because so many people want to add to the book and take away from the book instead of just believing the book. It ain't my job to add to the book, to take away to, from the book. It's just to believe the book tonight. Now, if we just believe the book, it settles a lot of problems. Amen? Hey, this is the thing. Is sometimes we got to open up this book and we got to hold it up and we got to read it. We got to make some decisions. Am I going to believe this book and am I going to follow the book? Am I going to let my opinions get involved and say, how in the world could God do that? Why in, the, why in the world would God allow suffering today? It ain't my job to question it, it's my job to believe it. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. There's a reason behind everything, Brother Josh. But sometimes in this book, when, we, when it starts to say things that, that gets a little bit shaky and a little bit, little bit uh, not so understanding, it can become rough to the flesh. But when you re remember the other verses, like trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not up to thy own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. When we read scripture on all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purpose, it becomes a lot easier to believe the rough times just as it is to believe the good times, amen. I tell you, a lot of times you find inside of the scripture when things get rough, God makes a way to escape. Amen. You remember whenever, you remember whenever they, was, they was coming up to the Red Sea and all the soldiers was behind them and Pharaoh and them and when it seemed like all hope was lost, the Lord parted the Red Sea. That's the part we like to get to the good part. We like to get to the good part, but there's something that leads up a lot of times in the Word of God to the good part. You know what it is? A lot of times, something rough. Some things in this life don't make sense, Christian. Not everything me and you is going to understand. We don't have this thing all worked out. But the thing is, is if it's inside of this book, and God said it, we believe it. If God said it, just preach it, just proclaim it, amen, and just believe it and stand on the authority of the Word of God and just stand on it and say, even if I don't understand it, I believe it tonight. Not everything I understand, Brother David, 
I couldn't preach everything inside of this Bible and understand. What I tell today, but one thing is, I'm not called to understand everything. The Bible tells me to lean not up to my own understanding, but to acknowledge Him. He's the author of the book. He helps me to understand the book. This book is alive and everybody is still learning inside of this book to this day. You will learn inside of this book to the day that you take your last and dying breath on the face of this earth. You won't even scratch the surface of this book. So many people want to be worried about the things they can't learn instead of the things they can. So many people are worried about the negative instead of the positive. People will read this book and they'll, find, they'll try to find the fault in this book instead of trying to find God in this book. We're standing in the times where people are looking for not finding God instead of trying to find God. We're living in a time that people want to disprove God instead of prove God. You got a world out here that don't have mine in your best interest. And they'll lie straight to your face and tell you they care about you. But inside of this book, God will tell us the truth, Brother Josh, even when we don't like it. You know what politicians don't do? They don't tell you the truth when you don't like it. They tell you what you want to hear. They tell you what you want to see. Amen? Hey, they ain't worried about telling you the truth. They ain't worried about your family. They ain't worried about lying to you. They're worried about getting a piece of your money in their pocket. They're worried about everything on the outside, amen. And they, they, hey, I'm telling you, there's politicians today that would use that Bible and stand up for the LGBTQ movement. There's politicians that would use that Bible and say, judge not, lest ye be judged. There's a woman today that's going to be uh, supposedly supposed to be in the Super Bowl, Brother Josh, and her name's Taylor Swift, and she's got this video of her dressed up like the devil. But on July 13th, 2023, she was claiming to be a Christian. She said, I'm a Christian, amen, go look it up for yourself. She had a video, a music video, and had, like she was in hell, amen. But July 13th, 2023, she said, I'm a Christian. And she was talking about Jesus. But they made a music video of her in hell. You know what I'm telling you today is, is if that book says it's wrong, it means it's wrong. Whether you like it or not, God is not for the LGBTQ movement. God ain't, God ain't for the gay pride movement. God ain't for transgenders. God ain't for just equality between man and woman. Amen. Woman's different from man, and man's different from woman. A child's different from an adult, and adults are different from a child. Child children have lost their respect for their parents because there ain't somebody telling them the truth. They're telling them what they want to hear. Child does something that's wrong and their parents don't like it. You know what they do? They put a cell phone in their hand. Here, shut up and be quiet. Won't you put the truth of the Word of God in their hands? It might change their life. We got parents today and we wonder what's going on. And the government's saying everybody's equal. Let everybody be equal, amen. Let everything be fine. Let the gays do what they want to do. Let the LGBTQ movement do what they want to do. Transgenders, all this stuff. But when you stand for a Christian, Shame on you, amen. Shame on us for standing up for what's right, amen. Then they'll use the word of God as God is love. And use the rainbow and mock God, amen. And hold up and say, I'm a Christian. Hey, I'm going to tell you something I don't believe in. I don't believe that you can be in a gay pride movement and standing for that stuff and say, I'm a Christian. I don't believe that you can be a grown man walking into a child's bathroom with little girls and say, I'm a Christian. You know why they're doing that today? Because the truth ain't being preached because people's worried about hurting somebody's feelings. They care more about your feelings more than your soul. There's preachers that will stand up that care more about your feelings than your soul tonight. And they don't believe this book. You know why? Because they want their opinion to matter more than this book. This book matters more than anybody's opinion. Amen. This book is the truth. This book is fact. This book stands firm and it stands the test of time. Mine and your opinion don't. I was talking to my dad the other day and they took a group of college students. I forgot how many was, but it was only like 50 or maybe even less. And they started off and told them to, they described something simple. And by the time that it got to the last person, Brother Charles, it was different. 
What was said to the first person and described it, if you take, like, for example, 100 people and you tell the first person the car is purple, by the time it'll get to the 100th person, the car will be black. What I'm telling you today is, is people's stories change. Things change. People let you down, amen. They don't care about you and whatever spews out of their mouth, whatever goes out, they don't care about. But God's word is inspired every single word of it. Every single word. When God said LGBT, that, that, that it's wrong for a man to sleep with a man and a woman to sleep with a woman, you can find out the sin it causes. But let this world and this news tell you a man can sleep with a man and a woman sleep with a woman, amen. They'll say, oh, it's okay. They won't tell you the heartache and the sin it brings. They're lying to you, amen. Hey, i tell you something today. This news ain't got your best interest. These politicians ain't got your best interest. And I promise you one thing is, this country as a whole don't have the church's best interest. But the church should have the world's best interest. The church should want to tell the world the truth. They don't care about us, but we find in the Bible the truth tells us this world don't care about you. The Bible tells us. But the Bible tells us for the church to care about what's going on out there. What's going on in our school systems? What's going on in our country? I don't get behind the pulpit and talk about politics. And one of them preachers say, oh man, all he ever does is talk about politics. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus talked about a whole lot what was going on in his time. He talked a whole lot about what was going on in the government, amen, and what was going on with the tax money and stuff not being done right. He said, he said stuff's going to wax worse and worse and to look at the stuff and see the signs of the times. To see the signs of the times, you must know what's going on. It's rough, Christian. It's rough. And ain't nobody telling us the truth today, that things are rough. I like to say this, if you look in Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 1. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 1. Now this is Paul talking. He said, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, it took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which are of reputation, the pillars in the church. Lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because, now listen to this, because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily despite our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now, I'd like to go over a few things in this scripture. Paul's talking to the Galatian churches, amen? Paul's talking to the Galatian church, and there was Jews that came in that was trying to bring the Gentiles back into bondage. Now, I'd like to jump straight to the point, and verse number four said this, and that because of false brethren, these false brethren was unbelievers. This wasn't people that I believe, if you study on it, Brother, Brother Charles, this ain't Christians that was living a false lifestyle. This was people that was not believers. They was claiming to be brethren, but they wasn't. And they was creeping in, and they was trying to spy out the liberty that was going on in the church. We like what's going on here in the church, and we want the Spirit of God here. we got to have truth. Yes. Not everybody's going to like the truth tonight, but we have to have truth whether we like it or not. We got to stand on the truth whether people don't like it or not because you know why? Because that gives us the liberty of Christ truth. Yes. The liberty of Christ, I believe that in order to have the Spirit of the Lord, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. How's there going to be freedom in the house of God if we ain't obeying the Word of God? Well, it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. I got my opinion, you got your opinion, everybody's got their own opinion, and we all go our own way and do their own thing. There's people in churches, Brother Josh, that they've been in a church. I, I, I'll tell you a story. I've seen people in a church with my own two eyes go to a church for two years, over two years. Preacher preaches something that he believes that was a foundational thing, and they didn't know the, plea, the preacher believed that, and then they left. 
You say, what do you mean by foundational thing? I'm talking about something that was foundational like, but we believe as far as in uh, the virgin birth. I had a conversation with somebody that the preacher wasn't even preaching what he believed in. What I'm telling you is a lot of people will try to, try to keep people and preach on what they want to hear instead of preaching what the Bible says and then when the truth comes out, the preacher's the enemy. The preacher ain't supposed to be the enemy today. You're supposed to pray for the preacher. You should know what your preacher somewhat believes. It shouldn't take two years to find out something huge is what I was talking to him about. And I said, you didn't know he believed that? They said, no, he ain't ever preached on it. Two years? What do you mean he ain't ever preached on it? Find out two years in something that was huge. Then they leave. You know why? Because the preacher told them the truth that was in the Bible. Now this person I was talking to, they said, I don't believe it. I said, it's the truth. I'll tell you what it's talking about. And I won't get into it too much because some people believe different things. But he got it going into uh, divorce. This preacher said, said that he did not agree, he did not agree with somebody, uh, with, agree with divorce, and some people would say he was standing against it, Brother, Brother Josh. He wasn't talking about circumstances, but he stood against it. And this dear couple that left the church, amen, they left the church, and it was, it was actually in Ohio, in a place I went and preached in Ohio, and these two people left the church that I was talking to, Brother Josh. And they said, if a couple ain't happy, they can separate. If a couple ain't happy, they can separate. Preacher said, nope, amen. He stood up and he said what he believed in on that. And we talked about if God joins something together, let no man put asunder and so on and so forth. And talking about the vows. And they said, God understands if you break a vow, if you ain't happy. No, we stand in today in a time where people ain't happy. Where people, everybody wants to be happy despite the Word of God. You can't have true peace without the Word of God. You can't have true peace if you don't stand on the biblical things tonight. What I'm saying is, is if it be of God, no man can overthrow it. It's going to stand the test of time. And the Bible says in Psalms 12, 6 through 7, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. God's going to preserve his word. His word is settled in heaven. The words of the Lord are pure words. They're holy words. They're sacred words. They're true words, whether humans believe it or not. Church today, a lot of them want truth. But they only want the truth that they want to hear. You know, if you find inside of Galatians in chapter number 2, whenever Paul is talking to the Galatian church, and he's talking to the believers that's in the church, and in verse number 5 it says, to whom we, now I like this key word, now I want y'all to watch this. Verse number five, y'all look at this with yourself. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. And there's a word I want us to look in right there, and that word is we. Was it just Paul that was standing for it? There was other people that were standing for it. It said, we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour. Paul didn't say, I didn't do it. He said, we didn't do it. And what I'm trying to tell you is today is if you're in the church, amen, and you believe something, stand bold on what you believe in. Don't compromise on what you believe in because so-and-so don't like it. Don't, don't compromise and lower to somebody's standards to help them to feel better because they don't like it. So many people will say, well, this and well, that, and get somebody to feel comfortable with the sin that they're living in. God ain't comfortable with the sin that me and you are living in. Me and you shouldn't be comfortable with the sin that somebody's living in either. So why in the world do we pamper sin? We pamper sin because we care more about people's feelings than we do about the Word of God. We care about hurting somebody's feelings more than mistreating 
The Holy Spirit of God. Did you know you could mistreat the Holy Spirit of God? What you watch, he watches. What you listen to, he listens to. What you stand on, he lives in. And he has to listen to you. What you're standing on. What you believe in, amen. The Holy Ghost dwells inside of the believer tonight. We don't stand on nothing no more. This, this preaching ain't too popular because this preaching ain't too popular today because nobody preaches on it. The flesh don't like it too much because we want our sin to be pampered. Brother Charles, we don't stand for nothing no more today. You talk to most people, you talk to most young people, and I heard somebody talking about it the other day, 30 years old and younger, they don't stand for nothing. They let whatever goes on in their church, they let it run loose, let it run rampant until it destroys the church. They let it run loose and they let it run rampant until it destroys what's going on in God's house and it destroys what's going on in people's households and then people are looking to the preacher like it's his fault because he didn't tell them the truth in the beginning. You got a question on what I believe in, I'm going to tell you not no maybe about it. Well, I think about that I believe this way and this, this circumstance and under these conditions. No, if the Word of God says it, I believe it. I believe it today. You believe there's a literal burning hell? I believe there's a literal burning hell with millions of people in it today. I believe it's a burning hell where the firm worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Amen. And it is complete separation from God. Some people will preach hell that is just a separation from God. No, it's a literal burning fire tonight. It's the truth. But people don't like preaching on hell because it makes them feel a certain type of way. People don't preach on the blood like Joel Osteen because it's too gruesome. That's what Joel Osteen said. Thousands of people that watch that man, if not millions. And he gets up there and says, I don't preach on the blood because it's too gruesome and people's life is already too hard. And they need something positive. It's on video. Go watch it. His face, his mouth, his speech, it's on video. And that's what he said. Now, if you go listen to his preaching, the video backs up his preaching. Joel Osteen don't preach on the blood. He don't preach on sin. He don't preach on hell. He's a prosperity preacher today. Let the truth march on. Amen. We want our children to hear the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them it's wrong, this ungodly music. Not, okay, well, it's okay sometimes because we, wanna, we want you to feel like other kids and feel normal. That's what the world does. It's okay, it's okay, but I don't want my kid to think I'm up too tight. I want them to feel normal like other kids. No, let me tell you what being normal does. It sends you to hell. Being normal will, but it will send you straight to hell tonight. If you do the things of your, your nature and what feels right, it will send you to hell. Our nature is at enmity against God. And without the Spirit of God and without the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His tonight. That's what the Bible says. And it's the truth. So what do we do? Do we compromise with this world? Or do we stand on the truth? Who wants the truth? Amen. You want the truth? Hey, everybody can be preached to, but not everybody can be pastored. Everybody can be preached to, but not everybody can be pastored. Everybody can listen to preaching, and when they don't like it, go somewhere else to a different preacher and a different pastor and a different church over and over and over again. Somebody will listen to a message a hundred times, hear one message they don't agree with, it's truth, it's biblical, and leave the church and start talking bad about it. You know why? Because this world don't like the church. There's people that care more about their own feelings than what God says in His Word. Let the truth march on, amen. Let the truth march on. There's people that's coming in that wants to hurt the church. There's people that walk through them doors with a smile on their face and look good on the outside, but they ain't got the best interest for the church. You know what you do? You preach the devil out, amen? Hey, you keep on preaching, you keep on singing, you stand firm, and the devil can't stick around long around God's spirit tonight. The devil can't stick around when truth is being preached. Hey, I tell you, it's like a river sometimes, Brother Josh. Some people will come in and they'll leave. Then you'll see more people come in and you'll see them leave. I can't control that today. I'm called to preach the truth in love, in lowliness, meek and humble. Not getting up and saying, look at me like I'm trying to hurt somebody's feelings. I ain't called to hurt somebody's feelings. I believe God would cut me off if I did that. 
I believe that God will cut me off if I, if I started doing that stuff. I'm in the same boat as everybody else that needs help from God, Brother Charles. And you know what helps me? You know what helps me, Brother Josh? It helps me when somebody gives me the truth. The most truthful thing I've ever heard in my life was given to me out of this book. I found everything inside of this book to be true. Because it is truth. It stood the test of time. And it will continue to do so. Amen. i tell you this much though. When you read in Galatians chapter 2 and we're about finished up. In the meetings in Jerusalem, amen, you look at Galatians 2, 1 through 5, and now I just got a few things wrong down. In the meetings in Jerusalem, false brethren being applied, they were not true believers, but Jews trying to subvert the church were turning back into full-fledged Judaism. They were checking out their liberty in Christ, and it's just like the devil to want to ruin our liberty in Christ. He don't like it tonight. Now, if you remind, now let me mind you something today, that this trip that Paul took to Galatia, this was his second trip there. The first time Paul came around, they believed what he preached. Then the Jews came in and caused confusion. Study it. They caused confusion. Then Paul came back around the second time, and he's pretty much like, guys, what are you doing? Doesn't the Bible say not to be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine? It's real easy to believe what one preacher says, but when somebody else comes in to believe what they say. But it ain't about what Brother Nathan believes. It's about what the Bible says tonight. It ain't about what so-and-so believes, the great preachers of old, Jack Howes and Percy Ray. It ain't about what they believe. It's about what God believes. It's about what God has written down. It ain't about their great quotes and the great things they say. Thank God for God's man. But what I want to tell you tonight is I have a lot of respect for a man that will stand up and tell me the truth even when I don't like it. We should have respect when somebody gets up and will tell us the truth even when it don't, we don't like it. If it's truth, it's truth tonight. And I'll tell you one thing is, as Paul said this, he said we didn't even let it happen for an hour. We'll let it run loose in the church for years. Paul said he came in to that second trip from Galatia, amen. Hey, let me tell you how much guts Paul had. Paul had enough guts to, whenever he showed up and he came back and seen the mess that they was in, he didn't stay there and the mess came in. He left and he came back and he came back and said, y'all are crazy. What are y'all doing? Y'all want to go back to bondage? Y'all want to go back to that garbage? And he got up and he didn't say, please don't go back to bondage. He said, no, these are false brethren. He didn't say, these, these might be saved. These might be your friends, but they, they might have just woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. No, what he did is he said, these are false brethren, and they're trying to hurt the church. Get that stuff out of here, amen. Get that stuff out of here. Let the truth march on for Jesus. Let the gospel truth continue to march on. And the only way that the gospel truth is going to continue to march on is out of this church. I ain't saying it ain't going to happen in the world. The word, the, the word of God is going continue to continue to stand, amen, forever. But I tell you one thing is, is the word of God can be preached inside of this church the wrong way if we don't stand on the truth. We must believe the truth, amen. We want godly stuff to be done up here. Let's listen to what the preacher's saying. Let's pray for the preacher. Let's see where the preacher's heart at. Let's see where one another's at, amen. Let's, let's see what's going on here and what we believe in. Paul knew what he believed in, and he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul says, though I suffer, though I've been in afflictions, though I've been in bonds, and so on and so forth, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because I've been persuaded. Have you been persuaded tonight that this is the truth? No matter what comes your way, no matter who says it, you, say, you just say, God said it, I believe it, and that's good enough for me. God said it, I believe it, and that's good enough for me tonight, amen. It stood the test of time, it's the true word of God, and I believe every single word of it, every single word of it tonight. But in the meetings in Jerusalem, false brethren wanted to come in and to hurt the church. You know, Brother, brother, brother David, today, today being mean, being mean or standing for what's right gets betrayed as being mean. 
It's hate speech. Go before the Board of Education and read one of these library books that's found in these elementary schools. Oh my goodness, he's anti, he's anti gays. He'll figure out, I've seen a preacher over in North Carolina. He's a preacher, he's a pastor, and he's a governor. And they went before, he went before the school board and he started reading this book that was in elementary schools. And it showed, uh, I'm not going to get into it too deeply, but two men together in an elementary book. You can figure out the rest, amen, and he started reading it. He got done reading it and the school board said this, you said this while you was preaching. And they wrote down what he said. And they said, you're anti-gay, this is hate speech. You know what he said, Brother Charles? He said, what I preach behind that pulpit is separate from what I do with the, with the school board. He said, what I preach behind the pulpit is separate from what I do with the school board. He said, this stuff, if it was a man and a woman, don't need to be shown in a book to elementary students. But people were twisted that it's hate speech. He wasn't saying that it was just because it was too men. He was saying it in general, that that stuff shouldn't be shown to elementary students. But it's called hate speech. People's being pampered today in their sin, and everybody's just fine with it. I tell you tonight as I'm going to continue to stand on the word of God. And I pray that the spirit of God will use me until I take my last and dying breath off this earth. Because this is what God's called me to do. Amen. And I ain't satisfied outside of this book. I ain't satisfied if I say something that's wrong. Help me. Correct me. Show me in the Bible. Amen. Because this Bible is truth. And one day I will stand before God for what I've done in this body. Whether I don't like it, whether I do like it, it's the word of God. Give it to one another. Help one another by giving people the truth and letting them know that you love them, that you care about them. Brother Josh, I care about you, but if you got outside that book, you best believe I'm going to tell you. Might get you in a chokehold and tell you. That's how much I love you, amen. I tell you, if I get outside of that book, I pray that somebody bring me, have enough respect to get me down from that pulpit and don't let me get up there saying no garbage. But you want to know something? People expect the pastor to love the church, but the church don't love the pastor. They expect the pastor to give them what they want to hear, but they don't want to give it back. What are you saying tonight? If so many people will look on others and want something from others, but not want to help others. People looking for a handout from others but they won't, don't want to help others. What are you saying tonight? Because people want truth, but they don't want to give the truth either. They want the truth, and they want, want, want what's done is right, and they want right done by them, but they don't want to do right by others. If you ask anybody today that's in the office or anything else or what's going on inside of this world, hey, nobody says, I want you to treat me bad. They'll tell you they want you to treat them right. They want you to respect them. They want peace. They want this. They want that. But they're looking for this stuff in all the wrong places. They're not looking for it from the truth. They're looking for it. For, uh, they're looking for these things while living in sin. But people don't got their eyes open to the things that's going on around them. They look at it as it's just to, it's just being gay. It just looks at just being transgender, so on and so forth. We're going to finish up with this. Because I talked to somebody one day. And we got to talking about the Bible and he didn't want to hear it. But he, uh, they, they brought up, uh, the, the, this couple brought up another couple that was two women. And they said they really, really, really love each other. Now mind you, this couple's got kids. They got three kids. They brought up this couple that was two women and they said that they loved each other, Brother Charles. Brother Charles. And this is what they did. Whenever they got to talking about it, you know what they said? They truly love each other. And they said this, they said, if somebody wants to be gay as long as they don't bother me, it's okay. When that stuff starts being allowed to go on, people don't realize they will end up being a grown man in the child's bathroom with the little girl. People don't realize what that stuff is to bring. Well, just let them be gay. Well, whenever you just let them be gay, you just got to let them be a pervert. You just got to let them be a pedophile. Where do you draw the line, amen? The Word of God draws the line and says what's right and says what's wrong today. Man ain't got to draw the line. I don't, I don't got to draw the line and say, well, this is okay, this is okay, but this ain't okay. We got to draw the line there. The Bible says what's right and the Bible says what's wrong. 
and stand on the word of God no matter what comes your way, Christian, amen. Pray for this church that this church will stand on the truth no matter what today. Pray for one another today. We need truth in today's time, amen. We need truth in today's time. Now, if you go down and you look in Galatians chapter 4, at the end of that chapter, Paul said this while he was still in Galatia. He said, do I now, now watch that key word, am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? Am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? At first they liked Paul, then Paul told them the truth, and they didn't like it. You can find that at the end of Galatians of chapter number 4. He said, am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? He said, you not remember the first time I came around and having these eye troubles and stuff? And then it said this, it said in the word of God, it said this, if it were possible, you would have plucked your eyeballs out and gave them to me. He was having eye troubles and he said, if it was possible, the first go around, whenever I was preaching on grace and I was preaching on Jesus, you would have plucked your eyeballs out to give me new eyeballs. He was having eye troubles. But then the second go around, he comes around and tell them the truth and now they, uh, he's looked at as their enemy. What changed, amen, I'll tell you what changed, is they did not want the truth. Paul's belief, Brother Charles, didn't change from the first trip to Galatia to the second. Paul's belief was the same from the first trip of the, to Galatia to the second trip of, in Galatia. But the second trip, the people didn't like it because they didn't like truth. You know why? Because somebody came in it was trying to confuse them. Don't let nobody come into your household. Don't let no music come through your radio. Don't let no preacher cross your TV screen that is contradictory to the word of God. When you let a little bit in, it will take a mile, amen. I tell you, one sin leads to another, Brother Josh. Hearing a little bit of false stuff will cause you to listen to more false stuff. I've seen preachers and I've seen many people that once stood on the truth, once listened to the tr truth, and compromised. You know, compromising most of the time don't happen like that. You know how it happens? It happens over time. It happens with one song. It happens with one uh, preacher that's preaching, preaching false doctrine. They don't just full-fledged throw in the towel. When it, name somebody that full-fledged throws in the towel and just goes to the worldly stuff that's going on today. It's compromising. Somebody ain't doing it and it just slowly creeps in. It will overtake everything going, in, going on in this church. It'll take everything going on in your household. And before you know it, you can't undo it. Because somebody don't tell us the truth. God have mercy on me if I don't tell people the truth. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm telling you is if God says it, you believe it. Amen. Preacher, you can't tell me what to do. No, I'm telling you what the Bible says to do. The Bible says for us to believe it because God said it. He didn't say believe it because the preacher said it. He said believe it because I said it. He's the great I am. He's the word of God. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. All I am is a traffic director trying to get people to the truth tonight. You know what the truth does? Sometimes it can feel harsh. And it can feel hurtful. But whenever we believe it, believe it. If somebody gives it to us and the word of God says it, just believe it tonight. Amen. Let's not compromise and let's let the truth march on. And if anything or anybody comes into this church and tries to hurt it, Brother Charles, don't let it happen. Don't expect just the preacher to just not let it happen. If you know what's going on and he don't know what's going on, hey, I'm going to tell you it's just as much your job as it's just as much my job to say you're in the wrong. You say, how do you know that? You're supposed to correct somebody if they're trying to hurt the church, ain't you? You ain't going to let somebody in your house to try to hurt your family. Now, I love this church just like I love my family, amen. We are a family. This is God's house. This place is to be reverenced. And this is a holy place. This is a sacred place, a place that we come to worship God Almighty as believers together in unity and one accord and one mind tonight. And how do we do that if we're letting stuff creep in and hurt the church? You can't let it happen or it will destroy the church tonight. Don't think that standing for something 
makes you hateful. I've been told many, many, many times that I've been aggressor, that I've been hateful, or this, that, and the other, but I knew where my heart was. And I told, and I, let's say, just like the message I preached the other night, amen, and I said hey, it was a hard message to preach, and I said I preached this in a meek and a lowly way. And I asked the Lord to help me. I knew where my heart was at. I knew God gave it to me. But I tell you, some people don't like it, Brother Charles. They don't like it, but it's truth. How do you get around the truth when God gives you the truth tonight? You can't get around it, amen. If God said it, I believe it, and I'm supposed to preach it tonight. It's hard, it's rough, it ain't easy being a preacher. It ain't easy being a pastor. And if it was easy, everybody would do it tonight. But it ain't always easy. People think that it's just rainbows and unicorns sometimes. No, it's rough, Brother Charles, and not everybody likes it. But it's the truth, and I know that God's going to provide whenever I do the truth. Whenever I stand for the truth, I believe this book. No matter what goes on around me, God's going to bless it. God will bless the ministry even when people don't believe in the ministry. Amen. It don't matter what people believe. Mama ain't called me to preach. Daddy ain't called me to preach. Seminary ain't called me to preach. God's called me to preach. And as long as I preach what God gives me, I promise you one thing is, we're going to be just fine. We're going to be just fine. Why are we going to be just fine? Because as long as you sit under the word of God and it's truth, God's going to take care. God's going to take care tonight. Let's rest on that, amen. God is good. I love the church. Thank God for the church. What I'm telling you is, is if, I, if I make a mistake and it's truth, don't be afraid to tell me. You know what love is? You know what love is? Telling somebody the truth even when they don't like it. That's love. That's love, amen. But I'm talking in the right way. Now, oh my goodness, your suit coat is hideous. I ain't talking about that today. Even if you do think it's hideous, you ain't supposed to do that. But what I'm saying is, is if somebody thinks that it's okay, they think it's okay because they're young, amen, and a boy likes a boy or something, or a girl likes a girl, you say, no, that's wrong. May be harsh, and they may think they was born that way, but Brother Josh, they ain't born that way. God ain't make people gay, amen. God made man to be with woman and woman to be with man and nature itself shows it. Nature itself shows that a man is supposed to be with a woman and a woman is supposed to be with a man. Stand on the truth, believe the truth, amen, and do it in a loving and a kind way, in a meek and a lowly spirit, abasing yourself, submitting yourself under the mighty hand of God and let God do what he does and you just be a humble servant for Christ, amen. I'm humble tonight. I might get up and preach, but I preach because I love you. Might get loud and so on and so forth, but getting loud ain't associated with uh, he's yelling at us and trying to hurt us. No. There's people that will speak soft to you and lie to you. I love you. Hateful. I can't stand Nancy Pelosi. Amen. And the stuff that comes out of that woman's mouth. I can't stand what comes out of Joe Biden's mouth, amen. I ain't no politic preacher. You can't name a bunch of times I talk about politics. But what I'm telling you is today is the church ain't standing for much in today's time. And they're listening to the junk that's being played through the radio, listening to the junk that's going on through the TV, and expecting God to speak to them. How in the world are you going to believe what's going on on the TV and believe what's going on in this book? It's two opposites. You can't believe it today. You can't believe it today. You don't know what's going on today. Amen. But I'd like to finish up with this today and say this. If you're here today and you're lost, this world ain't got your best interest. But God himself has your best, your best interest. And it's the truth tonight. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. And in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ is the way, He's the truth, and He is the life tonight. Uh, the life tonight, amen. Jesus preached two times more on hell than He did on heaven. Jesus Christ himself, I don't do this, amen, I ain't Jesus, but I'm going to tell you something today, Jesus could not be America's pastor.
They'd hang Jesus the same way today as they did 2,000 years ago. Let Jesus come in and come in and say, you bunch of hypocrites, you bunch of dogs, you bunch of scribes and Pharisees, you bunch of wolves in sheep's clothing. Let a preacher get up and say that, even if it is truth, they're going to say, ain't no way that's happening here. People would rather be lied to and be pampered than tell the truth, amen. Hey, I tell you one thing is, it's right, I am a dog. I do eat from the crumbs of the master's table, amen. I do need Jesus. I ain't nothing more than a servant tonight. I don't need to be told I'm some good person that's going to heaven by my works. I need to be told I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. You know why? Because that's the truth tonight. We need truth. And I tell you, it's rough times, and a lot of you older folks today have grown up and y'all have seen true godly preaching, but this next generation has a rude awakening coming. This next generation has a rude awakening coming. If there, ain't another, if there ain't another set of godly preachers that comes up and we don't teach them the truth, Brother Josh, the, the, the true Bible-believing churches are going to die off. If we don't preach the truth, what are we going to do? We need the truth tonight. We'll finish up right there. Give somebody the truth this week. Tell them with love, but tell them the truth. You know there's somebody that needs to hear the truth. Maybe there's a family member that you ain't talked to about salvation. Tell them about salvation, amen? We believe in hell, but do you believe in hell, uh, do you believe in hell enough to tell somebody at the workplace? Do you believe in hell enough to tell a family member? Or when the preacher starts preaching on you, you say amen because you're sitting in the comfort of a pew. Let the preacher say it, but I ain't got to say it. Let the preacher preach it, but I ain't got to preach it. No, I'm going to tell you something today is we're meant to, to, to give the word of God to others. Remember the woman at the well in John chapter 4? And she went and witnessed to the Samaritans. And she told them all that Jesus did for her. And it said that they believed on him because of her word. Your word is important today. And what you stand on is important. What you believe in is important. Where you go to church is important. The music you listen to is important. It might not seem like much, but there's somebody watching you. And not only is somebody watching you, he's watching you. He's watching what we do inside of this church right now. That makes me sometimes a little bit nervous because I got a reverence for God tonight. To know that God himself knows what's going on tonight in this church should bring a little bit of reverence to the church on what we do during the week. Realizing we're ambassadors for Christ, that we're a picture to people of the church, and if we don't stand for anything, we'll fall for it. If we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. I pray that you'd apply the message tonight. I'm just called to preach it. Amen. I know that this study has helped me in realizing in that scripture one of the biggest things that helped me is when Paul came back to Galatia on that second trip, he said that he didn't even let the Jews try to subvert, the, subvert the, uh, the, the believers back for not even one hour. Paul stood against it so strong for not even one hour, he would not be subject under what the things that he was saying. What does that mean? He wouldn't listen to it. He wouldn't let it be preached into his ears because he wasn't listening to it. Amen? Hey, I don't believe Paul would go into a lot of churches today. If me and you go into a, into a church, we'll, if we hear something we don't like, we'll probably leave. But I bet you Paul will stand up and say something. Hold on a second, amen. Hey, you're leading lost and dying souls to hell. That ain't the truth, amen. There's a preacher that stood up. I believe that you've seen the video, that you've seen it. And that, that preacher that stood up at Joel Osteen's church and hold, held up a Bible and started preaching. And then the people came up and grabbed him and escorted him out. Why did they do that today? If somebody stood up today in this church and wanted to start, and they had something to say on their heart, and it was spirit-filled, I, mean, I believe that man was probably filled with the spirit and didn't like what was going on in the church. Didn't like what the man was saying, and he had something to say against it. But they said, oh, no, not happening here. We don't want truth today. We don't want truth today, Amen. We need truth in the churches. And for us to allow this stuff to go on right here inside of this church, we can't do it. We can't do it, amen. We've got to stand on truth. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's been faithful, and he's been true. And as long as we stand on this book, his word is going to continue to stand, Brother, Brother Josh. It stands no matter what. 
But if we just stand on this book, this church will be just fine. If you're here today and you're lost, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way to find out what the truth is. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in Jesus' name.